Greed can really drive people to do heinous things in order to get money. And 147 years ago, greed led to the demise of six people in Lebanon County, PA. December 8, 1878, police found an elderly man dead. His name was Joseph Raber, and he was suspected of dying accidentally by drowning in the Indian Town River. The drowning was reported by both the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Lebanon Daily News. Yet, Lebanon Daily News made hints in their articles that something was suspicious about this drowning. Lebanon Daily News, December 9, 1878. Quote, Yesterday morning about 2 o'clock, Israel Brandt arrived in the town from Indian Town Gap in search of the coroner, stating that a man named Joseph Raber had fallen into the Indian Town Creek and was drowned. This neighborhood not being celebrated for the moral character of its inhabitants or its acts of charity caused by a great deal of comment when it was understood that Raber was heavily insured and the chief amounts held on his policies were residents of the neighborhood. End quote. The coroner saw no marks on the body of struggle of any sort and any bruising at all. Charles Drews claimed that he saw the man fall off the bridge over the water, and Raber was deceased by the time he got down to the body. Several other witnesses backed up Drews' claim, and life insurance was put on Raber of $10,000 a little bit before he died. The life insurance was put by Frank Stichler, Charles Drew, Israel Brandt, Henry Wise, Josiah Hummel, and George Zeckman, who all happened to have blue eyes. A few days after the death of Raber, newspapers would bring up strange insurance payments to certain individuals who put premiums on him. Now, Joseph Raber was considered pretty old as a man who lived in a hut in the mountains in the area at the age of 60. Also interesting enough, at the time, it was not odd to take life insurance on someone, nor was it illegal. On December 10th, the Cincinnati Star said the following, Then in the Reading Times, February 4th came along and the insurance group the men took out for Raber started to investigate on what seemed to be suspicious. They took witness after witness to question them to get some answers. Later, the men would all be in custody. The trial then took place at the courthouse on April 18th, 1879. Many witnesses told the court that they saw the men often meet up in Brandt's Tavern, talking about how to execute their plan. Joseph Peter, who was from West Hanover Township, was a witness to the murder, saying that he saw two of the men walking with Raber and drowning him in the shallow water, and then threatened residents to stay quiet or they would pay the cost of snitching. Then the men were eventually charged April 24th, 1879. The six men were charged with conspiring to kill Raber to get his insurance money. The men were sent to Lebanon County Prison for about a year when five out of the six men were all sentenced to death by hanging. Wise, Drews, Stichler, Brandt, and Hummel all ended up confessing to the murder, but Zekman was granted a retrial and was found not guilty, convincing the court that he had simply been an investor. Charles Drew and Frank Stichler were the first to be hanged on Friday, November 14th, 1879. Israel Brandt, Josiah Hummel, and Henry F. Wise weren't hung until May 13th, 1880. Brandt and Hummel even tried to escape. On the gallows, Wise was allowed to address the assembly before Brandt and Hummel were let out. He declared that all six of them were in fact guilty. In fact, Hummel and Brandt had made secret confessions that weren't to be released until a year after their death. George Zekman, the one that was claimed innocent, would go on to develop coughing seizures that was said to be very painful, causing some to speculate if that was his punishment. Or maybe Raber's ghost decided to curse him. Zekman died at the age of 39. Due to natural causes, but they all lived on 
in different ways. After the hangings, a few years after, a lot of weird things started to happen because of their death and the darkness surrounding this trial. Henry Wise's grave was defiled, and his skull was taken for some reason most likely to be speculated as a relic seeker trying to claim something that he liked. Or possibly a cult member using it for some type of magical practice. Joseph Peters even said that he was haunted by the five men who died, thinking they might be seeking revenge, bewitching Peters. But the most well-known haunt of these men would be the blue lights that are said to be seen at the Moonshine Church in Indian Town Gap near the military base, where Raber is buried. The blue lights are supposedly to look like the blue eyes of all the men still trying to hunt Raber. Some even claim to see a dark figure by Raber's grave, thinking it might be himself looking for revenge. But others think the paranormal sights has to do with an entity called the Red Devil that haunts the area, and is said to be a poltergeist creating tricks on people. Some paranormal investigators have said to go and get EV responses there. Maybe you viewers should check it out one night and see what you can find. Hopefully, you'll see the blue lights. And if you do, let me know. And a little shout out to lebtown.com. Uh, I went to their website to get this story and get the information from the story. And it's a great place to look up some articles and stories that they have. And I highly recommend it. Well, that'll do it for this video. And I hope you had a great time watching it. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And if you like the video, click that like button. And I'll see you next time.